pulley here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, normally I wouldn't plug um, much by Games Workshop because they're, you know, a massive financial empire. However, there's some stuff that might have slipped under your radar. So I'm a big fan of science fiction games. I'm also a fan of um, space and air games. Air games are actually kind of a nice thing if you have a low budget or limited personal carrying capacity. Um, things like air games, you'll usually only have like, you know, dozen models at max to bring along. So these aren't a bad thing um, to, uh, to take up playing. So, um, Games Worship has brought out um, Aeronautica Imperialis. It is a air war game based on Warhammer 40k. Now, it's actually based on a earlier game done by Forge World, um, and I used to play that excellent game. <sighs> um, Games Workshop have kind of changed the rules and brought out Aeronautica. Aeronautica uses slightly larger scale models. I think they're about like 1 1 44th scale by the looks of them. And um, look, it's it's a lot of fun. It's interesting. And like I said, it may have slipped under your radar. Now, Games Workshop has a uh, mental problem. They're actually quite good at coming up with really nice games at the periphery of their IPs. Games like Blood Bowl. Um, hey, we've got Warhammer. Oh, but what if we did a sports game of a fancy sport kind of in that same generic kind of setting? Yay, but it doesn't sell as much as our main uh, flagship game. Oh, they'll get disappointed and they'll stop selling the damn thing because it just isn't as big a seller as their main thing. So of course it isn't. It's a peripheral game. And then they'll realize they've made a mistake. So in five years, they'll start selling the stuff again and then they'll decide they'll get sad. And then in five years, it'll be back again. So they just go through these cycles. I'm really hoping that they just keep this one going rather than go through the usual cycles because, you know, eventually their own fans are going to set fire to their offices. But this is kind of going through some problems now already because it comes out in box sets. So the very first one, it was effectively setting you up for um, the Imperial um, forces versus um, the Orcs. So it had um, uh, Thunderbolt, Imperial Thunderbolt fighters and Marauders and um, um, this sort of thing versus, you know, Orc um, um, battle jets. And then they brought out another box set and um, another box set and another box set. But as kind of one box set comes out, they kind of, the next box set disappears off store shelves and just goes online. If, if they're, they're kind of hard to find. They're so keen on their latest production, it's hard to find their previous ones. However, they do keep all the kits going. So what you get is, in each box, you get a set of the actual rules. And the... These rules are actually, they're not too complex. They're, they're probably only about this much of this you know, well-produced book. And the next section of these will be scenarios and it will be squadron lists for whatever two forces that particular box set was about. So the current one, what is this? Wrath of Angels, which is effectively the Space Marines versus, well, they used to be the Eldar, but now they are calling them Asriyani. All right, fair enough. So, um, you get, you know, picture references and you get the actual stats for the ships and different vessels that they can take. And this sort of thing. You know, here's the Asriyani and their vessels and we. So, there's been some strange um, design decisions made in this, which we'll go over. But first off, this is a quite a pleasing little game. So it comes, each box comes with model kits. Um, you'll get like half a dozen aircraft for each side. Now you can also obviously get boxed kit sets which have usually um, like half a dozen fighters or three large aircraft like big bombers and so on that you can just buy in at the stores or buy online. So I haven't painted them yet because I've just put them together, but you know, here's, here's a space marine fighter. Wee pew pew. Um, and here are our how beautiful little Asuyani fighters. I love those. They're so pretty. They're going to paint them so nicely. And, you know, here's the big kind of bomber aircraft from the Space Marines. And... Whee! More Asuyani. Yay! So... And you can paint these up with whatever codexes you've got or like. Or See, now, the strength of the um, 
40k thing was that it was always designed to be whatever goes in your imagination. They gave you some um, um, space marine orders and they gave you some craft worlds for Eldar and things like that and but the idea was that you can make up your own color schemes to suit your own imagination. Please go out there and use your own color schemes to suit your imagination. Imagination is so important you don't only have to paint the same things time and time again. So there's a wealth of these different things. They all work differently. There's little special rules that go with some of them. So the Isayani stuff is very, very mobile and it can like jink at the end of a turn. It can like slip, side slip a hex and so on. And um, um, a lot of the Imperial stuff is not particularly wildly um, maneuverable, but it's absolutely wrought iron tough. It's you know, incredibly tough stuff. Um, they've put out Tau uh, and all these sorts of things, so hopefully, apparently, the Necrons come next. So they're getting some really nice aircraft designs, they're getting some nice stuff. So, it's played on hexes. Um, we get um, little stands. Whee! There's one of the kit boxes. So, you get little stands with little clear things. And these stands have clock counters on them so that you can record the height and the speed. Um, Fairly simply, what you do in uh, a turn is you have a series of counters which represent different sorts of maneuvers. You pick a maneuver for your aircraft secretly, put the counter next to them, then you roll for initiative, and then whoever gets the initiative, they nominate one aircraft, either their side or the other side, and that moves. And then the next person moves, it's an I go, you go system, do, 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 until everyone gets their move and has performed their maneuvers. Then fire is done in the same way whoever had the initiative nominates an aircraft that's going to fire first and then the other guy gets to do one and back and forth until they are all done. There's some special things in there. If someone is in a tailing position on an aircraft, before all movement and anything is done, these guys get a free fire at that aircraft. So it kind of makes being in a tailing position more deadly. Uh, all right, very nice. And um, at the end of a turn, you see if anyone's victory conditions are met. If you've taken too much um, damage to your squadrons or if too many turns have gone by you've got to like you've got to bingo fuel and you go home and then you count up the points to see who won hooray <clears throat> so you know this is all very nice the aircraft have um, handling characteristics these are represented in a minimum and maximum speed they can take a throttle which is how much they can speed up or slow down um, there are also maneuvers that they can choose from not all aircraft can choose from all of the maneuvers so the big Big, big fat kind of wobbly ones, they don't get to um, dance about the skies quite as much. Um, fair enough. Um, as well as obviously linear distance, there is vertical distance. Uh, you can only really fire at someone if you're on the same level as them. If you're one level higher, it's way more difficult. You're rolling effectively to hit, you're rolling on a d6 for each weapon that's firing. Five or six is a hit, but it's negative one off your dice roll for each height difference. So if there's one height difference, you'd only be hitting on sixes. Two height difference, can't do it. Uh, when you dive, you increase speed. You know, when you climb, you'll drop speed. If you exceed your speed characteristics, uh, you can damage the aircraft. Uh, you can also go into accidental spins and all these sorts of things, and uh, or you can purposely put yourself into spins. It makes you very, 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 very difficult to hit. Um, but you have to roll against the handling characteristics of the craft to see if you recover. So things like the uh, Asuyani craft are really, really easy to handle, and some of the um, Imperial stuff is um, terrible. It's like, you know, a brick with wings. So, you know, it's, it's nice. So the weapons, of course, because it's, it's a Warhammer 40k, they're very weapon obsessive. And here's where we get into some of the strange design choices. The thing with a normal air game, it would be that the range of firing is way way less than the range you can move you know very famously as aircraft start going into um high performance props and early jets you can fire at someone dive pull up and collect your own bullets on the way up um if, if you played some old games like um flight leader and so on it was kind of neat you you were zooming around the board but you had like a one hex range you had to come up right behind people to actually fire with cannon missiles were longer but um so maneuver was important these guys have for some reason chosen to put very long ranges on the weapons so um and the boards that come with the thing are relatively small so like you're got some aircraft that are only able to go like 
six or seven or eight hexes a turn is their maximum speed. But long range on some of the weapons is like 10 hexes. So you've got a couple of turns of do -do 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 flying around um, in range of people as they're shooting at you. Like most games, workshop games, they use the same mechanism every time where you roll a bucket load of dice to hit. Now you've made hits, each of these weapons has something they've got to roll on to convert the hit to damage. So now I'm looking for five or six to hits and I've got a set number of dice that I roll. Each aircraft has on it how many dice it rolls at the different uh, range bands for each weapon group it's got. So you'll say, for instance, these little Imperial fighters here, they've got like two laser cannon and they've got four heavy bolters or something like that. So we get the heavy bolters and it'll say they roll this many dice at short and medium and long and they convert, they'll need like a five or more to convert damage from a hit. The las cannons, there'll be like only two dice rolled for those at certain ranges, but you know, a two or higher converts damage. So you take your dice and you, you have to roll and then you have to re-roll to convert. However, the stuff that comes out as damage basically takes hit points off the other thing, and these things usually only have a relatively limited amount of hits they can take before they go down. So the Asayani ones are fairly fragile, they take two points, the um, Imperial stuff tends to take about three points, bombers and whatever can take about, you know, or well, big chunky bombers can take three or four points. Um, the Asayani ones actually are still only two, they're fairly fragile, but... Well, here's the thing. So... This isn't a brilliant simulation of actual air combat. For one thing, like, you've got a higher chance of hitting the more weapons you have, etc. And, you know, this isn't actually how this works. But it's a science fiction game set in a science fiction universe, and it also needs a certain continuity with its, its root game, 40k. So, as that, as kind of a cool little science fiction game playable in its own right, it's actually an enormous amount of fun. It's quite challenging. Um, you zoom around, you do your manoeuvres, you fire a fist loaded dice at each other, and most of which ping off and go nowhere, ping, 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 and then when you get those conversions, like, wee! Um, there are lots of upgrades you can get to the aircraft. You've got, like, points that you're spending. I can put aces, I can put extra weapons, you know, I can buy upgrades to aircraft. So you're, try, you're trying to balance the sort of the resource management of do I want a ton of basic aircraft or do I want oh, some guys that are souped up. Um, it's a nice game. It's good fun. It's um, It works entirely within itself. It's not going to entirely break the bank the way many Games Workshop things do because you're not really buying that much. If you wanted to play and even if you wanted to give yourself like maximized choices you're probably getting one basic box set and maybe one or two um little model kits and that's going to be all you're ever going to use you're never going to have more than like a dozen aircraft there so um and and you know there's they they're fun to build um they look like they're going to paint up really nicely there's a community online for this so look this um this game's a bit of a hidden gem um, they're going to keep bringing it out, but it's it's not going to be one of their main things. So they're going to have to have a look very carefully to to find the bits and pieces for it. There are some extra stuff you can get. There are cards and so on, which have in the rules it's got the upgrades for your aircraft. There are card sets you can get which have those written out on cards. So you can lay those out in front of you if you want the visual reminder. They are not, not necessary to play. There are extra play boards. However, it's a straight hex game. You can play this on any boards. You can make your own. Um, so, um, you can, you know, make canyons or yeehaw, you know, go diving down the equivalent of Death Star trenches, if you will. Uh, I think this is an excellent and largely overlooked game. I'd like to see a lot more come out from the company for this. Um, if you like, um, air games, if you like kind of space fighters, space games, and if you kind of like that, that some of the Warhammer 40k kind of geist is, is, is it's kind of fun. It's, it's, it's got its catchphrases and it's got its madness and so on. And it's, it's kind of fun. So it lets you, um, it lets you kind of partake in, in that level of silly madness. Um, look, take a look at it. Aeronautica Imperialis. Um, it's really, really well worth a look. Um, you know, um, if you don't want to go into a Games Workshop shop, go and have a look at it online. There are Facebook pages for this. Um, yeah, get in there and get playing. Cheers, everybody. Bye.